There are a couple questions on how to name or how to number and determine the numbers of carbons and bicyclics. So let me start with that in terms of well, what is a bicyclic? So a, a fairly simple bicyclic would be to take a cyclohexane ring and have a CH2 group attached to basically carbons one and four of that so that what I have is I have in essence two um, ring systems here so I have this ring which I'm going to color in red and then I have a second ring system which I'm going to color in different shades of blue and purple and so those two rings are fused together by this carbon this carbon and this carbon so they share those two in common and what would this look like well if I'm looking down on it I would actually use my bold and dashed wedges to indicate that the CH2 group was actually pointing towards me and if I took a view where I'm down here looking at it along the the ring system it would actually look like this where that's my CH2 group so when I'm up here looking down on it I see this structure and when I'm looking at it sideways I see that structure so this is an example of a fused ring system for a bicyclic compound okay so there are those two rings that are there now in terms of terminology any carbon that is a part of both of the ring systems but but um, is a what we would call a tertiary carbon or even a quaternary carbon but has three at least three carbon bonds this is what's called a bridge this is called a bridgehead carbon and so in this case there's two bridgehead carbons that one and that one those are two bridgehead carbons this would sometimes be called actually just the bridge okay so sometimes the terminology gets a little bit dicey because we don't know how necessarily the ring is fused together but let me show you what that fused ring system would look like in three dimensions so let me pull up my my iPad modeler here and what I'm gonna do is I'm first of all gonna get rid of everything I'm gonna use a cyclo use a um, cyclohexane ring I need to get rid of that and then I'm gonna put my bridge there and my bridge there so now I'm looking at it um, in the same way that you were and now I'm going to go ahead and make it a three-dimensional view and so here is the three-dimensional view of that of that ring so first let me orient it so that you're looking at it so now you're looking at the CH2 which is on top here and then the six-membered ring is down here and I can think I think I can make that a little better here if I use some cylinders so here is you can see there's the CH2 on top and there is the six membered ring so this would be the first view I would have of it and then if I wanted to be down looking at it on the ring it would look like this so again here's my CH2 group and then here is my six membered ring here is a bridgehead carbon right here here is a bridge head carbon here and then this might be called the bridge right there that CH2 okay so this is what a 
cyclo uh, what a bicyclic compound looks like and we can have these in different shapes and sizes I could go back here and I could draw for instance if I eliminated this one I might maybe I want to put two carbons in and notice that's ugly but when I do that it will now give me so now what I have is I actually have sort of a propeller of two carbons in each of the systems so if I look at it this way here's my six carbon here's my six carbons in that ring and then here's my two carbons on top and if I rotate that around you can see here's my two carbons on top and then there's my six rings my six membered ring there Okay, so you can have these different structures again let me put it in a cylinder so it might be a little bit easier to see there's the there's kind of the cylinder viewpoint and so in this case I've got three sort of propellers each having two carbons each okay so that's that's what the bicyclic compounds look like they may look strange but actually you find these quite often in um, natural products um, we're going to do in lab a steam distillation of cloves and the kinds of essential the kinds of compounds that we're going to get would be what would be found in essential oils and so if you have essential oils or perfumes or fragrances um, they're actually made of a lot of these bicyclic compounds so that's what they look like now the question is how do we name them so the way that the structure the naming structure is is that you basically have a bi cyclo and then we have brackets with three numbers separated by period by a period and then we have a another uh, prefix and then a and e so this is the basic structure of the name of a bicyclic so what goes where well the total number of carbons the prefix for the total number of carbons in the ring um, in the bicyclic ring structure goes in this in this blank with the a and e so for instance um, here is I'll just here was the first one that we drew it has a total of one two three four five six seven so this would be a bi cyclo number 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 heptane the hept being the prefix for a seven carbon alkane okay now when we're putting the numbers in the numbers are going to be this the numbers of atoms in each sort of what I what I call propeller of the of the bicyclic compound so let me highlight that so for instance well let me here's my two bridge heads right those are my two bridge heads and so then we can think of basically a three membered propeller this this and this make up the three members of the propeller and so in this bracket goes the number of carbons that make up each side of the propeller starting with the largest number going to the smallest number so there's two carbons on this side two carbons here and one carbon up here so this would be called a bicyclo bracket two to one heptane and so that tells us that we're when we're making this structure if we started with our bridge heads we would have one carbon and then two carbons and then two carbons on that side so a two to one bicycloheptane one of the things that is always the case is that the total sum of the bracket numbers 
is always going to be two less than your total number of carbons because we are not including the bridge heads in this numbering scheme or in this naming scheme. So if you have a heptane, the three numbers have to add up to five, which is exactly what they do. So this structure would be a bicyclo 221 heptane. Okay. The structure that I drew on the iPad looked like this. So if you wanted to check yourself real quick, you could stop you could stop this video and write the name of this and then come back and see if you're correct. Okay, so if you did that and you're coming back, here's my bridge heads. The total number of carbons here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to be a bicyclo octane for eight carbons total. And then what size um, propellers do I have? I've got one, I got two carbons there, two carbons there, two carbons there. So this would be a bicyclo 2.2.2 octane. My double check here is I've got eight in my octane and I've got a sum of six. So this would be a bicyclo 2.2.2 octane. Now, another example might be this molecule, <coughs> which is called decalin. And so for decalin, this can be written as a bicyclo octane, and you might say, but wait, I don't see three propellers, that's okay. We would number it the same way and name it, so it's going to be a bicyclo with a parentheses and then something A and E. So let's count up the total number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So where the decalin name comes from. So this is a bicyclo decane. Our bridge heads would actually be here. And then in terms of our propellers, you might say, but we really only have two. That's okay. We've got four and four on this side. And then how many on the third side? Zero. So we would actually call this a bicyclo 4.4.0 decalin. So this would just be a two sort of two rings that are fused together, but only um, through one shared bond instead of multiple shared bonds, as was the case with the other two. Okay, so that's how we name the core structure of the ring. Now, a question was, so what happens when we put substituents on the ring? Well, let me make this molecule. So this, this structure, this is going to be a bicyclo, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is going to be a bicyclo octane. Here are my ridge heads. And in terms of my propellers, what do I have? I've got a two on this side, a one up here. And I've got one, two, three down here, so I've got a three. So this would be a bicyclo 3.2.1 octane. Now let me put a chloro group somewhere in this molecule. Uh, where would I want to put it? I'll put the chlorine here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these numbers for the propellers, and I'm going to raise some of these marks. So how do I, wh what number is the chlorine in this bicyclo 3.2.1 octane? Well, naming is all about rules. So rule number one is that when you're numbering for a substituent, the numbering must start at 
a bridgehead. Okay. And then you must go to, you must go and number through the largest propeller, we'll call it. Then the second largest propeller. And then finally, the third largest propeller. And we're, well, if, if we had more than one substituent, here's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to give the first encountered substituent the lowest number, which would be a substituent number. What does that mean? I want, to, I want the chlorine to have the lowest possible number in my numbering scheme. And I have to start at one of the two red bridge heads. But I must go through this three-membered ring first to then get to the two second two carbon ring to then get to the one carbon ring. So the way I would number this is I would number this one and two, three and four because now I'm going to go to five and six and seven and then finally to eight. So notice that I started at a bridgehead, went to carbons two, three, four, went through the longest propeller, and you got to do the numbering scheme for these for two of those propellers is basically continuous and then the third one you'll jump to the final whatever that number turns out to be so this would be if I went one two three four five and six I would have a six chloro bicyclooctane now you could say okay well let me try let me try and see if I can beat six good luck with that but if you're going to try and beat six, let's say you go oh one two, and eh, wrong, because you have to go through this three membered you have to go through the three membered propeller before you can go to the two membered propeller. So why did I start up here with this being number one? Because if I start here, I've got to go one two three. Four, five, six, seven, and then eight would be here. So in this case, the chlorine is not getting the lowest number, so that's why I had to start over here with this bridge being this bridge head being number one, so that that way I could go around to give the chlorine the lowest substituent number. So you have to go through the largest propeller, then the second largest propeller, and then finally the third largest propeller. And the idea is to give the first substituent you would encounter the lowest number. So this is kind of different than cycloalkanes because I'm really looking at the first encountered number. Okay. So let me let me think of one here. So how about Let's say we have a say I have a three membered ring, then a two membered ring. Then a two membered ring and then a one membered ring. So let me just clean that up a little bit. So there would be my ring system. And let me put a chlorine. Let me put a chlorine there. So this is the same ring system as before. This would be, it just looks different. This is a bicyclo 3, 2, 1 octane. 
and so what would the um, lowest or what would the chlorine be in this case in the lowest number and you can try that and then come back so again I've got to go through my longest chain so I'd start here and go one two three and four and then into the second longest chain which is five so in this case this would be a five chloro three two one or bicyclo three two one octane okay. and so over here I had a six because I want one two three four five six what did I do here in this one? And this one I started, so say I messed that up. Just showing you what kind of mistake you could make. This is number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the same one as before, six chloro. So you have to go through the longest propeller, then the second longest propeller, and you might say, well, what if you have two propellers that are of the same size? Well, then you're going you're gonna to number so that you give the substituent the lowest number. So if I had, for instance, a 2-2, two, two, if I have a 2-2-2 two, two, two system and I put my chlorine here, then with all three, with all three of the 2-2, two, two, with all three of the the two carbon propellers, then I could just say number one, number two, and that would be a two chloro, two two bicyclo two 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 octane. But if you have them, if you clearly have a longer, a middle, and a shorter propeller, you have to number in that order, and those numbers have to be continuous until you get to the third propeller the shortest one okay. so hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't respond down below and I can find a couple more molecules to give examples of